Hi, this is George Ray with the Evolve Academy. Today we're going to look at Nova LCT version 5.3 and specifically the new monitoring trial module that's part of Nova 5.3. I'm starting here in Smart. I have a very simple display, just two cabinets on a single data port. I'm going to scroll down here. You can see that I've configured my Nova 4K processor. So ports 9 through 16 are set up as redundancy ports. So two cabinets on port 1. The redundant port is port number 9. I'm going to send that to the hardware. Save it to the hardware. And now we're just going to exit smart. Now I prefer programming in smart because it can generate documentation and uh, handles negative space and, and odd spacings between cabinets much better than LCT does. It's much faster and much easier to do. However, there is no monitoring functionality built into smart. So here in LCT, I'm going to log in. We're going to go to screen configuration and my screen connection tab just to make sure that, yes, indeed, there's my cabinets. And this is what complex screen looks like in LCT. It's basically a giant spreadsheet of positions, cabinet addresses, and cabinet, uh, you know, pixel widths and heights of every individual cabinet. If I go into monitoring and go into the traditional monitoring function, you see exactly the same kind of display. As I scroll sideways here, uh, if I grab the corner of this box, even though it's supposed to zoom, it doesn't. And if I go to the sender tab, on the sender tab, I see my nine pin port, the port number. If I hover over here, I see all the information. It says, okay, port one is normal, and port nine is redundancy main ethernet port sending card one sending card one port one. So the redundancy is there for all the ports. That works fine, but it's an awful lot of digesting data and trying to figure out it. when you have an error, so I scroll sideways to see my error flags, figuring out where that error is is kind of difficult. Let's look at the new trial monitoring. So monitoring, click on monitoring trial. It's basically in beta. So you get this screen here going to first off maximize it to full screen. Starting up here, this uh, hamburger menu is the uh, setup for monitoring. The big thing in here is in the configuration is the refresh period. So either refresh manually, periodically, the minimum period is every 30 seconds, or refresh on a schedule and you can go in and build a schedule. Uh, I'm going to leave it periodically at 30 seconds just for the sake of this video. More tiles you have, the higher you want to make that time so that it can get all of the monitoring information back. Hardware configuration, you can add a connected hardware monitoring card, hub monitor. If you have smart modules, and I'll show smart modules towards the end, you can set your alarm thresholds for when different alarms go off based on temperature, fan speed, and voltage. And in error detection, you can set the current gain levels for when it's going to say, hey, you have a bad pixel. Apply that. Okay. Close. There's nothing here set up. Click on the plus button. And it asks, well, which primary card do you want to use? You click on receipt backup cards, backup cards don't work yet. So you can't monitor a backup receiver card with the redundancy connections. <clears throat> Turn on, I'm gonna monitor USB port one. I'm gonna give this a name down here. I'm gonna call it test. That's what I'm gonna monitor. Click add, okay. Now I have a monitor screen called test shows two senders because I'm using the same center for main and redundancy connections. Everything is green all across the board. 
And down here it says I have a total of two cabinets, no faults, and no alarms. If I drill down into this just by clicking on it, notice I see cabinets in relative position to their actual layout in Smart. Over here, we have the zoom bar, so you can zoom in and out. If I hover over a cabinet, I get all the information, sending card, receiving card, what port, what its pixel position is, what its pixel load area, how many pixels horizontal and vertical, and if it's working, I get that on each one. If I click on temperature, I see just the operating temperature. If I click on voltage, I see the voltage. Up here on the sending card on the primary, I see I have primary and redundant. I have the connected ports that's so saying both of those are working. And I have an input that's working. Let's see what happens when I disconnect the jumper. So I'm coming in here, out of this one, into this one. So let me disconnect that Cat5 cable. Now in 30 seconds, this will auto-update to show an error. If I want it to go faster than that, go back to the main screen, click Refresh Data. And now the senders are good, but I have an error. If I click in there, there's one fault. Click in there, it's abnormal. If I look at transmission, this one is normal. That one's abnormal, so that one is not getting the correct data flood. And over here it says, hey, I got one data fault. We all know that means, hey, there's a data jumper bad. Click back here. Going to plug that guy back in. And then go back to the main screen. And at the end of the 30 seconds, it's going to update automatically. There it did. And we're back to green again. I'm going to show you one more functionality that, that comes along with this. So I'm going to turn on smart modules, so hardware configuration, tell it it's. I want to look at module connection, temperature. Save that. Let's apply it to everything just in case. Close it. So I have the flat cable icon. Oh, I got bad modules. Uh, and I have bad flat cables. If I click in there, if I look at modules, see all the abnormals. Uh, what I have connected currently is literally just power supplies and receiving cards. So I have no LEDs plugged in. Um, again, I could locate the bad one. If I look at voltage, everything is abnormal cable everything is abnormal lots of faults I would if it was a smart module here I would get the working time and dead LEDs on error detection but I don't have any LEDs actually plugged in data transmission is good so I know I don't have a data fault that is the bulk of the new monitoring trial module Caveat is the redundancy function. It's not yet set up 100% to be functional. Um, I expect that's coming. Uh, scrolling, zooming, and being able to have negative space and a monitoring function that doesn't throw me into an Excel spreadsheet if I program in smart, uh, I think is a huge advantage. If you want more information about it, it is documented here in the help menu. Use your documents. And then you go screen monitoring, monitoring hardware, monitoring trial. It walks you step by step through uh, installing and setting it up. The only thing that's not documented in here is the right click for the locate function. And again, if I right click and I turn on locate, what that does is makes that cabinet light up red. So you can tell an assistant, hey, see the red one? The next one downstream from that is the one that has a problem. That's the last good one. Uh, so there's no uh, 
discrepancy when you're trying to describe which cabinet is having a problem. And then cancel locate makes the cabinet go back to normal operation inside of monitoring. So you have control over single cabinets and being able to light them up and go, this one, this one has a problem. Is this the right one? Nope, it's the one next to it. I hope this was a helpful introduction to the new monitoring trial module inside Novastar LCT 5.3. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us here at the Evolve Academy. Again, this is George Ray with the Evolve Academy. Have a marvelous day.